Hey friends, the little boys are asleep, so it is time for me to do another Git video. If you haven't seen before, I've been doing a series called Computer Stuff They Didn't Teach You. They're not all going to be about Git, but until I get through Git, I think I'll do a few. Uh, numbers 4 and 5 I think are pretty decent. You can take a look at number 4, Git 101 Basics. I think it's actually a pretty good video, and I would encourage you to check it out. In video number five, which is part two of the Git series, uh, if this becomes a series, I talk about pull requests. Now, a lot of folks in the comments said that they wanted to hear about rebasing, because we talked about Git basics and branching, and we talked about pull requests, where you pull from someone else's branch and merge it into your branch. So I thought we'd try one on rebasing. Is rebasing is about the scariest thing that people can do in Git, and people make it a lot more complicated than they need to. So let's see if we can make it simpler. Uh, before we do that, let's just get a sense of where we were. Again, I would encourage you to check out the previous two videos, but let's take a look. I also want to point out that I'll be using the Windows Terminal, and I've been using a thing called Oh My Posh that has allowed me to set up what I think is quite a lovely uh, prompt here. So I've got a couple of things in my prompt. I've got my path, my name, my computer name, my my main branch there. Yours may be called master, mine's called main. Uh, and I also have, by the way, my blood sugar because I'm a type 1 diabetic. So I like to know what my blood sugar is all the time and I've got an implant that sends it up to the cloud and then I bring it down into my prompt. So I got all the things that matter to me sitting right there. Cool. So uh, actually right here, one of the things that I've noticed right off the bat is I've got a, a red prompt here and it says four with a downward arrow. That means that there's something up there in the cloud waiting for me up in GitHub. Let's go see what's going on up there. Um, you'll recall that in the last video we pushed everything up to GitHub. So this is kind of the authoritative source for our things. Ultimately, remember, remember though, you get to decide where the authoritative source is. And uh, you'll see here, if I look at the commits, I had some lovely pull requests from some friends. Put in some suggestions and some changes. So thank you for those, for our little learning git here. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to say git pull. I'm going to bring those things down. That's kind of cool. Look at this. I just fast forwarded. And now I'm green, so that means that my main on my local machine is now in line directly with the one up in the cloud up there in GitHub. And it looks like I brought home 44 insertions, one deletion, and three files got changed. So some changes there. You see lots of changes in this new markdown file that someone gave us. And then somebody was messing around in our, in our test.txt file. Let's go and look at that. Cool. So someone made changes there, and I brought them down. You'll notice, though, that there was no conflicts. There was no trouble. I didn't have to merge anything. They just kind of fit nicely because they were adding, and they weren't competing with the lines of code that I had already written, or at least the lines of text files. Now let's go back up here, and I see that I've actually got one pull request. So let's see what that's about. Okay, look at that. So it looks like... Uh, last week, our new friend here, who's a junior web developer, has gone and sent a thank you, and they've updated one of my text files. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to go in here and say, let's ship it with our ship at Squirrel. We love the ship at Squirrel. He's excited to ship our, ship our product. And I'm going to say, merge. Actually, I could put the Swiss ship at Squirrel up here, or I can put him down here too. Put him in two places. Okay, so I've just merged that commit from his universe, his branch, into mine. That's cool. Hit refresh. See, there's no more pull requests. All right. We can see that the very last thing that happened was the merge from me a few seconds ago. I can come back down here, and I can say git pull, and look, I've now pulled those down, 
and brought his stuff forward. Now I'm going to run Visual Studio Code and see what our new friend has to say. I probably should have looked at his code before I merged it in. I would encourage you to do the same. I just watched your YouTube videos and I'm learning and updating my knowledge. Thank you, Mr. Hanselman. No need to commit this. See, that's why you should read these things first. But I didn't do that because when I merge code, I do it directly in production. Cool. Now, um, I'm in Visual Studio Code, which I mentioned, of course, uh, in the previous videos. I am using one extension that you might want to get for yourself. And as I recall, that was called the Git History extension. I'll show you why it's nice, because if you go over here and you press the Git History extension, you get this lovely graphical branching thing here that shows you kind of what's happening. And this is pretty clean because I'm paying attention to my repository. But you'll notice something here. People do things in parallel universes, right? They split the universe, they do their thing, and I merge it back in. But these universes, these moments, here Surya was working on something, here Maggie was working on something, here Alston is working on something. These things are happening in parallel universes until I bring their history into the main line. But those moments, those moments in time, and those parallel universes, those branches, they didn't disappear. We haven't rewritten history. We've merged history. Now this is quite nice because it kind of goes like that, but what if many people had been working on their stuff? And we had a half dozen parallel universes, a whole team of people working on stuff. Um, and some people were ahead of others, and some people were back in time. Uh, that can be a little bit overwhelming, and people don't like that. Some people like a nice, clean, linear history. They basically want to deny that those parallel universes ever existed. And that's probably okay, but it can get a little bit messy if you rewrite history, right? You go back in time and you kill your grandpa. Do you exist? Um, doesn't really work in time travel movies sometimes works in Git, if you know what you're doing. One of the other things that's worth thinking about is uh, there are some interesting movies that are time travel movies, because I think of Git and time travel being really similar, where uh, someone changes the past, and only one person knows that the past changed. And they're like, what? Like, Lincoln never got shot? What happened? Like, no, what are you talking about? Lincoln never got shot. What? I'm the only person in the world who knows that they rewrote history. That can be a problem in Git. It's sometimes nice to see the work that happened on those branches. But let's let's rewrite history. Let's save Lincoln and see uh, and see what happens, shall we? Okay. Now, if you'll recall, we were just goofing around. We made some text files. We're not actually changing any code here. Now, I can do this two ways. I can open up a terminal inside of Visual Studio Code. I'm in VS right now, or I can do this from the Windows terminal, which I like. And I also like that the new Windows terminal has this, this lovely focus mode. That's kind of cool. I get to remove everything, which is nice. Okay, so let's try to get into a little trouble. Keeping in mind that I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'll probably uh, mess it up. Now I can make a new branch, or I can go and say check out a new branch, and let's make um, make a, a, a parallel universe with evil Spock in it. Okay, so we're now in a parallel world called Mr. Spock, and you can see my log and the other things that are happening in the other world. If I go back to Visual Studio Code, and I come in here and I hit refresh, nothing's happened in this universe, you see? The origin, which is up there in GitHub, myself locally, and Evil Spock are all parallel. Nothing has happened that's special in my, in my new universe. And my files are the same. Maybe I can make a, a new file. Evil.txt. These are my evil plans. And then we'll make another one called Pure Evil. So many more evil plans. 
Okay. And you'll see when I hit enter there that my prompt indicates that on my branch, two items have been added. So I'll go and do a git add and git commit. All right, so now let's go look at our history here. We see our commit, it's in the future, right? Because right now we are ahead of main. We're doing stuff way in the future. And let's do a couple more of those. Because we're making evil plans, my friends. Now look at that. What we just did was we did an add everything and a commit at the same time. That saved me a little time. I didn't have to do an add and commit. I didn't get to pick what I wanted, but it was still kind of cool. And now I've got that one. Then I say, you know, maybe I don't like this. Maybe I don't like that. I want to rewrite the last commit. Maybe that message was wrong. So I'm going to go and amend. This is a little bit of a, oops, I jumped ahead of myself. Uh, uh, no, I'm actually not evil. Okay. Go back over here. Notice that that message that we had before, it's gone. So we've rewritten a moment in time. One time I saw this video game called Prince of Persia. And in Prince of Persia, not the original one on Commodore 64, but in the more recent one, when your person would die, they would go and say, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, that's not what happened. And then they would just do a redo, almost as if the game itself was telling a story about what had happened. And then when he made a mistake, you'd go, oh, no, that's not at all what happened. Back up. So we just kind of did an undo just for a moment, and we amended that commit just for a second. So that's a little bit of of rewriting, but that's not in fact a rebase. Okay, now let's go back over to main. We're back on main. You'll notice in our world, in the, in the good world, there's no evil, there's nothing bad happening over here. So we'll make some changes, do some stuff, Smurfs, Whatever. Hey, friends. Okay. And I'm going to go and do a couple of updates. Good things working on this main branch. There's one. Okay. Thanks for the compliment. Cool. A lovely. Compliment. Okay, so I'm making changes. You'll know that this is updating, letting me know that I can send it back up if I want to. Now I'm doing this to go here and show you. See here it's showing main. I want to show all branches. Now look, the main keeps going. We're doing our own thing. Evil is here. Now we could merge it in. We could merge it in. Now I'm going to try a little trick here. This is a little experiment. I've never done this before. What I've got here is a, my Surface, my little Surface tablet. I plugged it into a little USB uh, dealy. So what we'll do is I'm going to take my pen and try something new. Okay, let's look at this. We've got our, our main world here. There's main, okay. And then we've got, uh, we've got pure evil. Parallel universe over here. Okay. Now in the main, we've got a couple of commits. I'll make those commits little little squares. And over here in evil, we've got a couple of commits as well. And they're little squares. Looks like one of them. Nice little recognizes a square and the other one's not. This is Microsoft Whiteboard. There we go. Oh, that's a parallelogram. Evil parallelogram. Okay. Now, if we merge these things in theoretically, and we have this new reality, all these things happened in this order in parallel universes. 
But with rebase, what we could do is we could say, you know, everything evil that stopped around started around here. One, two, three, in that order. And then these other things happen kind of in parallel over here in another world. We could change that. We could actually make things very different. We're going to literally rewrite history. And the way we do it is by rebasing or basing this work here, which is currently based on, it started, or it's based on that first commit. We're going to change that, and we're going to actually pick it up. We're going to pick up this whole thing here. We're going to move it over here in order. And we're going to base it on this new reality. And then all this goes away, and things happen in a different order. That branch ceases to exist, and the evil has then come into our universe, rewritten history, and everyone's going to be like, whoa, what happened? Was that always like that? Like, yeah, totally. Uh, why, why, didn't you, why did you think it was different? That's a good thing or a bad thing. Depends on how evil you are, doesn't it? So let's go see what that looks like over here, shall we? We'll go and say get checkout. Go back over to evil, evil world. And when we do this, we're going to do a get rebase. We're going to say rebase on top of main. We're going to say take the work we've been doing in parallel, because other things have been happening in main. Main land just keeps going. And would you just grab all of that and just pop it on the top and basically play it back? It's like take that little time loop, move it into the future, and then play it back as if it had always been that way. Now, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, because it depends on whether or not people were in those files. No one was in the evil.txt files. They're a separate thing and a separate branch, so I don't think we're going to have any trouble. Uh, if you're concerned about having any trouble, you can say dash i for interactive. You can actually pick little moments in time and say, that happened, that happened, and that happened, but this other thing didn't happen. Let's see what that looks like. So, ooh, look at this. What happens is it pops up your favorite text editor. Now, mine is Visual Studio Code, and this can be a little scary because what's happening is we're actually in the middle. Look at that. It says waiting for your editor to close the file. So we have not done the thing yet. The, the instructions that you give to Git happen here. You're actually going to put the instructions right there. So that's an instruction. And the commit, if you recall from our 101, is like a hash or an identifier that says, that's the thing I did, and that's the other thing that I did. Okay? So we want to pick this, we want to pick that. Let's see what the other options are. Look at this. Pick that commit. Ooh, look at that. Squash a commit. Use this commit and squash it into the previous one. That might be kind of cool. All right? We can run a command or label something, do all kinds of stuff. The ones that we're really interested in are either pick uh, or maybe squash. So let's go and do this. Remember how we said we were pure evil? But we're so evil, we want to rewrite history and make it like we're not. So instead of pick, I'm going to actually say squash. And we're going to take these two things and pretend that they're one. We're going to squash the whole thing. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to close this file. Go back here, and it says waiting for your editor to close the file. Okay? All right? And look at this. It says, hey, this is a combination of two commits. This is the first commit, and this is the second one. I'm going to actually get rid of that. We're rewriting history, and we don't need them to know. Uh, nothing to see here. We also like Smurfs. Cool. All right. Successfully rebased evil Spock. Okay. Let's look at our log now. We had a refresh here. Look at this. We had good things, a lovely compliment. Ah, nothing to see here. We also like Smurfs. Notice that it doesn't look like this. It doesn't come out and come back and come out and come back. The whole parallel evil timeline is gone. And those two evil things that happened separately got squashed, picked up, 
and popped on the end of that main that main line. And now I'm going to come and say get checkout main. So does that parallel world exist? Notice that main is still sitting here. So evil hasn't yet come into main. So let's try this. All right. And you'll note here, all the evil has been rewritten. Main and evil Spock are now the same. And if we go back out here, we can prove it by looking at the log. There was our lovely compliment from our new friend who sent me a pull request. And now there's nothing to see here. We also like Smurfs. Evil Spock has merged itself in by rebasing and rewriting history itself. If I then go and push this up into GitHub, get my green main again. Now we can go into GitHub, look at our commits, same log as before. It's like nothing ever happened. Now, notice here, because the branch, that evil Spock branch that was there for a moment is on my local machine, and I only pushed main or master up to GitHub, from the point of view of that main line, it never happened. It didn't exist. So we've rebased all those changes. If we go over here and we look at this, you can see that, that the branch exists out there, but it's, it's orphaned. It doesn't show up in the main line. There's a lot of power in doing that. So how do we think about this again? Remember, a merge is when you've created a branch to go and do some work, to maybe work on a feature. You made a parallel universe. And when you want to bring those changes back into your main line, you usually want to merge that in. But rebasing would be when you do a bunch of development and another developer maybe is making an unrelated change. You can then pull those changes in, take your changes, and run them on the top. You re-base them. You pick a new base, not the one you picked a week ago, but maybe you'll pick a couple of days ago or today, and you'll base your changes on their changes. And that's what Evil Spock did in our little scenario. Do you need to know rebase? It's up to you. If you want a clean history, if you want a nice linear timeline that has you know, not unnecessary merges like you saw me with different friends coming in from parallel universes, then you could do a rebase rather than a merge to bring changes in. Uh, if you don't mind that, you can merge them in. It really uh, is up to you. The thing is you want to avoid rewriting public commits. You have to think about, are you changing history? Are you changing only your history? Or are you changing the history for the entire universe, the entire project? So you want to be thinking about those things. It's okay to rewrite some history, but not all of it. You can always use tools like the tools that I'm using. Here I'm using, again, this extension in Visual Studio Code, which is called Git History. And that's a nice visual tool that lets you see what's going on and see all the different work. And also see the authors and the branches. A nice way to see things. And I really strongly feel like having a prompt that shows you what branch you're on and what's going on will make your experience learning Git a lot easier. Let me know in the comments what you'd like me to talk about next. I think we'll probably look at maybe more detail on squashing and what's called cherry picking, also reordering our commits a little bit. But I hope this maybe uh, demystifies rebasing. It's, it's not as complicated as you think. It's just time travel. And if you can understand the movie Inception and things like that and uh, Back to the Future, you can probably figure out rebasing. I wish you all the best in your journey as you learn all the stuff that they didn't teach us in school. If you like this and my other videos, please tell your friends and subscribe. And as the kids say, smash that bell. Thank you.